Mit zwei. I am live. Hello everyone. Let's just get started in a while and transition. Hi, hello everyone. How are you? So let me just docs and audio mixer sources. Stats. This is good. Okay. Docs. Some transitions. Hope everyone can hear me. Please give a thumbs up if you can hear me. Then we'll get started. Our speaker is waiting for us. Thanks for joining in everyone. So let me just, so I'll just see. Share. Two speakers transition now. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello, everyone. How are you all? Let's just uh, get started with the event. Just give it out a thumbs up if you can hear us. Let me just send it out. Forward. Yes, yeah, so can you please check whether you are able to access? I just sent you the link. Yes, so. Yeah, I'm able to. Uh, I'm able to start and. I hope everyone can hear me. Hi, uh, my name is Ash and. Yes. I would like to talk to you all about RPA and human in the loop. So we should get started. We've uh, had a couple of yeah, all uh, trying hiccup, out with a few all different the features. The word and that I can think yeah, of. So we're happy to announce that we can get started. Exactly. All right, so um, I let me start. I the screen share. Yeah, go ahead. OK, so I'll start uh, with uh, a little bit about can you do the screen RPA. Share, yes. It's coming up now. So as I already said, that's the topic for today. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so wherever, wherever you are, you in, are the world, in the good world, morning, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good afternoon, and good evening. Good evening. We, we are, are, um, we are, we in, are a in a world where, where um, um, RPA, RPA is kind, is of, kind of, of on the, on the tip, of tip of everyone's tongue. And we, uh, we uh, hear, we it, hear in it in very different, different contexts. Some, some, uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes it, it, even when, even, when, uh, even uh, some even people who are absolutely new, new or, or unknown, unknown about, about, about what RPA is, is they, are they are getting introduced to RPA or automations through Different, different ways, ways. Um, for, example, for example and the most, and the most common, common one being uh, that, uh, that their company, company decides, decides to go with, with um, implementing, implementing RPA, RPA or at least just trying, trying it, out. it out and and that's, that's how, how most, most of us get introduced, introduced to RPA, RPA. Mm -hmm. but, then, but then it's, it's, mu it's, it's way, much way much more than, more than that, that. and, and uh, human, human in the loop, loop is one of the one of such concepts that has it has it has broader meaning but it but it has been implemented or adopted by RPA in its own way that specifically, uh, specifically what, I'm going, to what I'm going to talk about today. So, so uh, uh, I, I, I am uh, speaking, uh, speaking to you, assuming that assuming that you, you either are very well are aware, very of, well what aware of what RPA is, is just someone or who's just someone about who's to about to introduce, be introduced. I mean, having no, I mean, idea, having about no it, idea about or it. You have heard or about you it, have but, heard about uh, it, but you uh, had a little bit of had a little bit of play with it or. Have uh, heard your colleagues uh, heard your colleagues it. talk about and it. No matter what bracket, no matter you're, what bracket in, you're in, uh, I hope we'll have something, uh, we'll have that, something we can, that we can you know, find. You know, uh, find that uh, speaks that to you. Speaks to you. And at the end of the session, at the end of the I'll session, try I'll try and so keep some time so that we can maybe have an exchange of ideas or questions and answers. So that is the so that is the that's the basic session. Basic session. We will probably we will probably look at Q and A at the Q and A at the very end. I'll just go through. I'll just go through what I have to say. What I have to say and. Yeah, let's start. Yeah, let's start. So, so RPA, I RPA, already, I already uh, briefly, uh, briefly a few said things about a few RPA. things about currently RPA. There are, currently, uh, there are uh, about about 20 to 30, 20 to 30 uh, 
Uh, actual like the actual, official like the official 55, number is 55 but, uh, 20 but to 30, uh, 20 really, to 30 prominent really prominent RPA companies, RPA companies. Uh, what RPA uh, is what RPA is, is, is it stands for robotic process automation if you didn't, if already, you know didn't already know that and, um, and uh, what it is, is what it is, it is, is the it is the ability our for our computers uh, to have uh, to have work like work uh, like a human uh, would work a human would computer. work so on the computer so we have programs. software programs these are called, these the, are RPA called the rpa tools they can build they can build script programs, script programs that can, programs go, and that can your, go and talk uh, to your own browser uh, internet explorer or any uh, any applications that you might have on your machine it can send out emails it can receive emails read them with the, with its own credentials and do a lot more powerful stuff that humans don't have to do because they can then do more valuable stuff, uh, something that requires cognitive uh, input such as, you know, decision making or speaking to customers, some some things that cannot be automated. And those are the real ones that bring value to every business. Now, um, what I'm what I'm talking about now is it will sound a lot like um, business friendly or something that companies, top managements care about. But uh, let me uh, let me assure you that I um, I typically speak to people who only um, uh, who, who are coming from an employee perspective because that is the one that I want to explore uh, how robotic process automation or a career in RPA can help uh, help you uh, improve your own you know career position that's that is the side I speak to so even though some concepts that I'm covering they might sound like uh, uh, business oriented, but they are actually uh, about the career that we can potentially build using RPA. So um, I have this graph in front of me for those who might be listening to this in a in an audio format, like on a podcast. Eventually, uh, it's basically just a graph of what RPA has looked like in the past six years, starting in 2016. And what we can see clearly is just it's it's a it's an um, amazingly improved graph over the last six years. Uh, it's incredible how much in uh, how how little time it has taken for RPA uh, from going something that was just being introduced in you know training sessions for existing employees in companies to now we are looking at like five years experience um, and getting incredible uh, job offers for people who are familiar with RPA. So. Uh, if you look at this graph, uh, it is to emphasize that RPA is definitely, uh, it's a very new technology, even though this looks like we've, we've come quite far, it's still in its very baby stages. If you if you go and read some RPA companies' websites, you will see that uh, they've been around for 13, uh, 13 years, 14 years. They've been founded technically for uh, that long. But actually, if you really think about RPA or if you go back in time, uh, you know, study some material, you'll find out that in the last six to seven years, the uptake on RPA has been phenomenal. Nobody even heard about RPA um, except for the people who were really in that niche market before that. Now RPA is just like a, a household name or, you know, uh, in, in the context of a workplace. So uh, it's it's both. It's still new, but it's already growing. Uh, it, had, it has already grown a lot. So the one question that I want you to ask yourself and to the to the you know hosts of this session is WIIFM. What is in it for me? That's that's the question. So why should you care if RPA or human in the loop has anything to do with what you are currently working on? You may not be at all working on RPA right now, but what it can do is it it can probably give you some perspective on what robots can do for you even in your current job whether you are whether you are an rpa developer or you have no idea uh, what rpa is doing in your own company there is something that you can still take away from the robots and that's why i always want you to ask this question what's in it for me and what's in it for you is uh, if you have some context about uh, what human in the loop is uh, as the name already suggests, it's something to do with non-automation non -automation parts. So what we want to do is robots to be able to work with humans because, um, you know, uh, when, when whenever we hear about robotic process automation, it's always like, 
automation is here to take away our jobs or replace our jobs that is the notion that uh, that was quite prominent uh, in a, like a few years back and uh, what the industry has done really well to convince is um, or actually prove that the robots are not here to replace but actually uh, replace only the boring parts that humans have to do so that humans can do better stuff and more efficient stuff that helps them, their careers, and also the businesses they work for. So what's in it for you is if you know what robot can do for you, you can ask or demand that your your company does that so that you can do better stuff. You can learn uh, and grow your skills. So that that is what I want you to take away from this. Now, just I've, I've already spent quite a lot of time on RPA, so I'll keep this one quick. Um, but this is uh, the latest Gartner report, which is uh, it's a company that does research and uh, you know r ranks all the companies for all different domains. Uh, as far as RPA is concerned, we have a few leaders. And this one that you see here, UiPath, has been consistently in this spot for the last three years, four years. So UiPath is one of the best uh, software providers in RPA space. And the most beautiful part about it that I love is that from the start, they've always been open source friendly, open, uh, you know, open and community friendly. So they've always had a component where you can completely download for free and get started for free. All their education is free and they give you all these resources that uh, that enable you to at least get started on the basics of automation. Of course, then you should, uh, if it interests you, you should, uh, you know, seek out uh, better help, like uh, get expert help. For that also, they have a community which is open and very helpful. So um, we, uh, Vajrang and I, we we are proponents of UiPath. I have dealt, uh, dealt with Blue Prism Automation Anywhere and Microsoft platform as well. But uh, UiPath is definitely something uh, to think about if you are looking at a career in RPA. And we will be going over a little bit of UiPath at the end of the session. So please stick around. Now, moving on, let's come to the human in the loop. So what is exactly human in the loop? Are we so, talking about something uh, like this? Ashtosh, yes. so <laughs> since uh, we have started a meeting a while ago, and uh, we have mm -hmm. new members joining in. So let this video play. And uh, this is fun to watch. Meanwhile, um, what happened? Your video just got turned off. Can you just check it out? Yep. Is that, uh, is that the video on the screen? Uh, yeah. Can you please stop the video? Let's just see with this yeah, one. I'll go back. Okay, so this is good now. I think okay. there is some issue with the video. Okay, fine. So first, let's give our introductions to the team members or to the members who are joining this. Uh, yeah, I deliberately... This is a good screen saver. <laughs> yeah, so I deliberately didn't start the discussion in the between because we'll have the hiccups in the starting. So now we have a stable stream. So I just mm -hmm. want all the members to get to know. Uh, welcome, Ashtosh. And uh, he is uh, he is a well-known person in RPA space, and uh, right now he's from Australia, and uh, he is also having a cool website, RPA for everyone. Go ahead and check it out, and he's running it. And Ashtosh, go ahead and give up about yourself. Tell tell us tell our audience about yourself once. Um, thanks, uh, thanks for joining for that introduction. Yeah. Um, hi everyone, I um, I'm from. Originally from India, I've worked as a Java developer for almost uh, nine years before I switched over to RPA, and that was about six years ago. A little bit of that part of my life will come up uh, later in this presentation, but uh, just a little bit extra about me. I live in Sydney, Australia, and I work at a really cool company called Rapid Mission. We are in uh, uh, obviously RPA uh, space, and I also work on a few other technologies that complement RPA. Um, and yeah, um, I have been a UiPath MVP for the year 2021. In the year 2022, I worked with UiPath directly on contract uh, with them for a while and uh, learned a lot. So um, as I've already said, UiPath is my favorite uh, tool to go to when, when it comes to RPA. Uh, 
so yeah, yeah, don't be surprised if you uh, you know hear a lot of UiPath stuff from me. UiPath community, as I already mentioned, I'm quite active there, and you should be active there too if you're if you're into UiPath because um, yeah, that that community is it, it has become quite a quite a group of people who uh, you know ha have gotten in touch even outside the community. So I have a lot of friends from the UiPath space who I now see in a, you know, on a day to day basis. So yeah, it, it's a, uh, if you're building a career in, in RPA, uh, these are a few things that you should definitely be on. And yeah, you can find me there and also on my website. Thanks, Vajram. Thank you so much for that. So I hope everyone can hear me properly. And uh, well, uh, we'll get started and I'm just checking on if there are any questions. If there are no questions uh, from anyone, uh, then yeah. So guys, uh, go ahead and give your questions and uh, let us know what are you looking for in this uh, session. And uh, well, we have already a predefined uh, structure for this, but uh, let's go and check with your questions. Let's see if you have any uh, things to be answered. We'll take it up at the end. So go ahead Ashtosh, you can come you can move this uh, person <laughs> juggling yeah. around and uh, you can get so, started yeah. yeah thanks uh so those of you who have joined in the last couple of minutes maybe uh what you're looking at is probably human in the loop i'm not sure but um so we we just kept it on the screen so uh, you know uh, just to have some fun but that's not what we are talking about today that is not human in the loop so let's let's then define the outline of what we are actually going to do today. So we will uh, cover a few a few W words today. That is, you know, what is human in the loop? Why is it important to learn for you? Like I already said, that is the question you should always be asking when you learn something new. Um, and that's not coming from a selfish standpoint. I, I actually want you to always learn something because if if you're not learning something new, no matter where you are working. Uh, it, it doesn't matter if you're not preparing for the tomorrow because the workforce is continuously changing. And if you're upgrading your skills, you're always ready to get somewhere. And, you know, uh, you should always be employable. So uh, that that is that's why I, I want to encourage you all to ask this question always. So why is it important to learn human in the loop? We'll see that a little bit. Um, and then we can move on to specifically in the context of RPA, where do we use human in the loop there? And then uh, a few real examples of uh, how you can implement it if you're working on, say, UiPath or Microsoft, etc. So um, I'll go to the next one, which is, um, let's, let's define what is human in the loop. So the technical definition is basically, a, it is a model of, you know, software or uh, physical like mechanical uh, machinery that requires human interaction. So it could be a physical robot or it could be a, a software program like the kind we build uh, in RPA. Uh, what it is, is uh, we introduce a human into the workflow or into the flow of an automation so that we can review their work, step in, intervene, you know, uh, get give it back some input if, if required. And then there will be some parts of the workflow where you need some kind of cognitive decision, decision making, something that is not easily automatable, or it has just too many variables, too many moving parts, and then it becomes difficult to, um, you know, cup capture that in the scope of an automation. So those are a few things that apply to RPA. Uh, the the last two that you see on my screen, the simulations and training programs. So human in the loop is also um, technically applied to things like flight simulators where we want to minimize human errors or if there are human errors, there should not be a casualty or loss of actual, uh, you know, loss of life or loss of material. So flight simulators are a good example of a human in the loop where we train them on fictitious software uh, that imitates a, a, an actual plane, but isn't actually a plane. So things like that. So our training programs are conducted on human in the loop. We are not going to be looking at any of that. So that's why I marked it in a different color. Um, but that that's basically what human in the loop is. Now, let's come to the most important question. Why is it important for you to learn? So, um, as I said before, a little, little bit about me. So you saw uh, that graph earlier that from 2016 to 2022. 
and um, it's coming up again in this slide but uh, this is my my graph my career's graph and uh, i was working as a java developer up until 2016 and in 2016 um, this is a little bit of a story but uh, my my childhood friend who I always wanted to work with, uh, he joined IBM and he said they, they are hiring for something, uh, some new developer uh, position and would you like to apply? And, you know, I had nothing better to do. Um, I felt like I, I was done with Java. So, you know, I thought, why not? And the interview was pretty much only on Agile. And I, I wasn't sure why I was, in, I was being hired because all they asked was about my experience with Agile development. And they did ask me about, uh, you know, have you done any kind of script automation, et cetera, uh, which I had. So, uh, of course, that helped me. But what they explained to me is they are going to train me on a software that goes to different software, uh, different systems and does things, which is like, and, and, and they kept calling it software robots. And I, I actually, for a moment, I visualize, you know, actual physical robots walking on the floors doing stuff. So that was my introduction to RPA. <laughs> but anyway, I, I eventually figured out that he was talking about uh, a software program. So they trained me on Blue Prism in 2016. And after that, I just got curious and I uh, ventured into Automation Anywhere and UI Path a little bit. As you can see, I worked with, with Automation Anywhere for three years, but I stopped eventually. Uh, but UI Path, I haven't been able to put down since I picked it up. So. Uh, I continue to work on that. My current company, uh, they exclusively work with UiPath, so I do a lot of stuff there. And yeah, it. Uh, so I, I, like many people, can vouch that this is definitely a really good company to, or a really good software to learn for you. Uh, enough about me. Um, what I wanted to say about this is, if you then put it against my entire career, if I do it, uh, it's just, I, I've only worked seven years uh, so far in, in RPA and uh, in Java, I was working even longer than that. And even still, it feels like I've learned so much in RPA because in just in the last six years, so much has changed. And why that is important to note is if you look at any technology, when it was introduced to the world, like Java, for example, it came out 20 years ago. When it came out, it was a very basic level programming language. And today, the world's most secure websites run on Java or .NET. You know, Apple, we, most of us were alive when the first phone hadn't even been created, first mobile phone. And the technology already has changed so much that we have more powerful computers in our pockets than we have actually on our desks. So technology always changes. And given a time like 20 years or 25 years, uh, the technology has gone so far. And if we can just see in six years, the uh, the RPA space has grown so much, uh, there's only room for more. And how that ties in with wh what I was talking about earlier with human in the loop is that, you know, six years ago, um, automation wasn't, or RPA wasn't being targeted as, you know, uh, the, the most uh, state of the art automations. We were just looking for anything that can uh, bridge the gap. So um, let me go down one slide. So this is an image that came up a lot in most of the meetings that I attended about five years ago, where um, for again, uh, those who are uh, listening to it only in audio format, this is a, an XY graph where the axes are complexity and benefits. So a low complexity, low benefits are like the low hanging fruit. You just have one automation where uh, a ticket comes in, uh, someone gets assigned and an email is sent that we are looking into it. That's a very simple automation. We can definitely get a robot to do that and build it and be happy. So that that's an immediate win. Um, quick wins are kind kind of the, there's benefit, more benefit in it, but the complexity still st stays low. So those are still good because we can also automate those and actually gain more or save more time. So those are obviously uh, easily done. But, you know, there's only so much that we can automate like that because not all processes are built equal and uh, many processes are very complex and they need more more than just, you know, low effort, low hanging fruit uh, kind of deals. So what to do with long term improvements or must do improvements? So in the last five years, we've dealt with a lot of low hanging fruits and quick wins. And, you know, the even for the technology, it was time that it started to deal with more complex stuff. But, you know, as you know, more, more complex stuff, the
the problem with more complex stuff is it is more complex. Uh, you, if you started to pl plot a process, it would it would get really difficult to you know uh, cover everything. It does get difficult, so that's why we need humans in the loop. So what we do here is basically we introduce intentional uh, waypoints where an automation would do a few steps and then someone needs to correct or make sure that whatever that robot has done so far is good and it can proceed to the next one. If not, they can reject it there uh, or you know, uh, they can manually process it. So get the robot to reject it. We can build all sorts of workflows using humans in the loop. Uh, and that that is why uh, that that's how uh, the new processes are being built. So if you are uh, in this space or even you know uh, if you are in the workforce, uh, set aside RPA for a minute. But if you are in the workforce, you are probably on the receiving end of this uh, this change where you will be subjected or you will be introduced to a process where you will be told a robot is going to do let's say email monitoring. Um, so you don't have to monitor that shared mailbox anymore. But when the robot picks it up, uh, it will say do a few things with it. It will check the attachments and then send you a verification call. And it will ask you whether whatever it has done, whether uh, whatever it has understood from the email is correct. Then you correct it if needed. Otherwise, you say approve or this looks good, proceed. And then it will proceed and so on and so forth until we reach the final goal. So that's pretty much um, how the new processes, new workflows are being built. And I bring bring you back to that question. Why is it important to learn? Because it doesn't matter whether you are on the building side, that, that is delivering side where you are building that automation or on the receiving side where you, you are actually part of that automation process where you are the human in that loop. Uh, you need to know about this because when you understand how these robots are working and what they are doing to improve your life, it it becomes easier. And not just that, in my experience, in most cases, we actually have better results when people on the receiving end are more receptive to these workflows because what they do is they have the most brilliant ideas. They are the process experts in every uh, you know, sense of the word. We call them SMEs, subject matter experts, in the context of RPA because we we get their help to build the automation workflows. So if you are someone who who is listening to this and uh, you know thinking that you are you are already in one of these processes where a robot tells you what it has done so far and you correct it, then it is important for you to understand this as well because then you can suggest better automation ideas and that that is how we come to a better win or uh, that is how we automate better or more complex workflows. Now Let's come down to um, you know the RPA. So I'll briefly go over uh, where is it used in RPA. Now RPA, I'm only covering a few because uh, you know we could go into the details of every company and how it delivers the humans in the loop. Not all of them do, do it, by the way, but uh, I'll just keep it to the leaders that we earlier saw in the Gartner quadrant. So UI path. Microsoft um, Microsoft has a, a very wide array of uh, technologies called the Power Platform. It has Power Automate, Power BI, and um, you know a few others. Uh, Microsoft Flows, that is um, the business flows. So that Power Platform and the Automation Anywhere they offer OCR as one of the uh, one of the pieces where human in the loop can be inserted. Uh, and then the other one being long running workflows. So that's a these are at a very high level conceptual things about uh, where human in the loop can be introduced. Uh, I drew this line in dots because Automation Anywhere has a, a kind of something called workflow designer, but um, I, I've never seen a practical use of it. So if you have, um, I would like to learn from you. But um, yeah, all these other arrows that you see they they work quite well. They have several different offerings, and we are going to focus on specifically UiPath. And just for the just for the benefit of this session, uh, there's nothing uh, nothing you know uh, such as wrong with uh, any of the other technologies. I'm just saying that we we are going to cover only one, and that too we're not. I'm not going to 
uh, give a like a technical demo where I just build out everything and run it. We're going to look at what what potentially can happen if you uh, decide to go with the human in the loop in RPA. So let's uh, look at the examples. Um, in terms in terms of the UI path, uh, human in the loop, there is something called document understanding, which is the OCR piece I was uh, talking about earlier, and the long running workflows, which uh, which are like the workflows that I described earlier, where humans in the loop are introduced and they step in at different stages to make sure everything's fine. Now, how UiPath implements it is there is document understanding on one end, which is a completely different purpose. Uh, it solves a different purpose. Long running workflows, they solve a different purpose, but they both uh, collaborate onto something called Action Center, where humans will only have to access this one piece and every robot, whether it's coming from a document understanding project or long running, they can create a verification task for the humans to only validate in Action Center and then take their input and move on, do whatever has been instructed by the human. That That is how UiPath plays with it. And now I'm going to just briefly go into UiPath Studio and show you uh, if you wanted to start learning, what resources could you could use and you know what are the things that are available for you at your disposal. So. I'll quickly jump into UiPath Studio. If you're not familiar with this um, platform or if this uh, with this window, this is uh, an RPA developer tool. We we build automations using this. Uh, this is a developer's license software that is available for free to download from UiPath's website. You can go to cloud.uipath.com and get started for free. Um, if you need any more technical details, Vajrang is the guy to ask because, you know, he literally does that um, full time. So, yeah, you're welcome to talk to him about that in detail. Now, what I want to focus on here is when you're starting a new project, you, you have a few templates to choose from. And what I was uh, showing earlier with the document understanding that is a type of project available in UiPath Studio. So if you if you can't see it here, you just need to go in here where where there are templates available and uh, the document understanding process is available here. If you can't see it, uh, you just need to click include pre-release. Uh, now it yeah, now it looks like the document understanding is out of pre-release so you can see it anyway. So you can download the the template use the latest version and uh, you can you can start working with document understanding. We will uh, quickly look into what it looks like. So the other process that that we have is uh, I was talking about long running workflows. Long running workflows are something called orchestration process. So if you go to uh, the UiPath docs website, Um, in in the UiPath docs website, you will be able to see orchestration process and you can also create a project from here. So if you click on orchestration process, it will give you a ready to use template and that project will be set up for you ready to go. You can uh, right away start building your automation with a human in the loop component uh, included. I've already created two projects uh, just to just to go into a little bit details. So let's go with document understanding first. So I have this project here, which is um, created from the document understanding template. What document understanding is in brief is uh, we get a lot of emails or we have processes where uh, PDFs or photographs are attached. For example, any invoices are there in PDF format or some kind of expense claim that is being made. Uh, we just typically get people to take photos of them and then they send it through an email we have to scan it. Someone has to manually read the details from that paper and then submit them into a system. What document understanding does is it it reads that paper and it's able to extract everything um, optically. So OCR stands for optical character recognition and OCR will be able to extract everything from that document. And we get we have the means here in this framework to train 
that automation to specifically look at things that are meaningful, such as if it's an invoice, we want to uh, extract the invoice number, the invoice date, who it is going to, um, you know, what is the last payment date or like, you know, dead payment deadlines and what are the actual line line items, which is like every line item on that invoice. So there could be multiple. So we would want to get that structured data out of the invoice and into an electronic format so that we can then do with it whatever we please. Like we can save it in a database. We can uh, run a different process through it, initiate something else. So all these things are possible. Why we need a human in the loop in this context is um, the images that people send are not always in the best quality. Sometimes they're just scans of scans of scans, or sometimes they're just photos that someone put on a desk and took a photo. So uh, because the angle was not exactly horizontal above it, uh, they were skewed. And things like these will always mess with how that text is read by a computer. A human can obviously make sense of it, but then that is the manual effort that we are trying to minimize here. So what we what we are able to do is um, we digitize that document, which means we read it. Uh, we, by digitizing, we can read every text letter. The automation, the robot reads every letter and uh, it also understand what, what that uh, document looks like. Then it classifies it, which means it uh, it decides whether it's an invoice or some something else. So one email or one source could have multiple types of different documents, different PDFs, and we need the classification to, uh, you know, understand what document we are dealing with so that we can extract it better, understand it better. Um, Ashto, sorry to interrupt you. So there was a yep. question uh, regarding document understanding since you have started with document understanding, and it's okay. from Parvati, and uh, she was asking Parvati. document understanding has a validation state how this can be effective in production manner because the process flow pauses for validation. It can be, uh, can it be effective in the development or deployment? Yes, so validation station, uh, it's a good thing you brought it up because that, that was exactly uh, where I was going with this. The validation station is the human in the loop component here. What we are able to do is we, um, anything that the robot has been able to extract, we send it to a human through a validation action. Uh, so there is a difference in validation station and action. The slight difference is that with station, it's sort of an attended automation where someone runs it on command and they get a window right then and there and they have to complete it so that that process can continue. So it will ask you, the robot will ask you runtime to validate that data. And then if you say everything looks good, the robot will continue. It will wait for that window to close. I mean, complete. But if you close it in between, that automation fails because it cannot continue. You did not provide the input. Um, but what the validation action is able to do is it's able to suspend that automation until someone decides to process uh, that one particular validation. Uh, in this, in the context of uh, human in the loop, what it is doing is, or what it enables us to do is, let's say we have 50 invoices coming in we could potentially start 50 different instances of this same automation. 50 validation actions will be assigned to human users, but the robot will not have to wait for one to complete. If someone comes in and co completes the fifth task that was created, only that task will automatically resume and the robot will complete the rest of the flow only for that one instance. And that that's the difference between validation station and action. Uh, with Parvati's question, I think uh, I I believe that's what she was trying to understand. Or if you have a different production related yeah. question, uh, then we can probably no, uh, take it so offline. Uh, what exactly? Uh, I think you have already answered it. Uh, so Parvati, to just make it simple, validation uh, validation station will be used only if there is any process that requires it. You can turn off the validation station and you can still use the document understanding and uh, that can be used and you can later validate with the results okay so let's uh, see what ashtosh uh, have if uh, in for us for the uh, demo let's go ashtosh i'll go on mute okay all right so uh, just continuing with that so after classification we basically extract and we run any business rule validations on top of that so this framework is actually designed so that you don't have to get confused there's there's literally no space for confusion. You just can, that is how exactly the uh, 
workflow runs and these are just the files that extra functions that have been written for this framework but if you look at the main process which has been already you know so well built by the ui path template developers what it does is it already gives you that flow how it is going to do, run and not just the files one by one it actually also um, puts a few checks so this process is built to automatically follow all these in you know in a intricate details it also has all sorts of um, you know exception fail safes etc so uh, <clears throat> let me pull up the validation part so as you'll see it, it's kind of similar to uh, the workflow that i was showing in my presentation earlier where we come to a place where we need to check if something has gone as we expect if it has then we just continue but if not then we send it for a validation um you know uh, validation station so we are trying to classify the document and then we wait for document classification so this is this is the one i was looking for now just a little bit of detail on that and i'm aware of the time so i'll i'll keep it short uh, what you should be looking out for when whenever you create these two uh, templates is it supports persistence this is important because what what i was earlier describing earlier is the robot is able to wait for the user to come back and um, action an uh, item an action so if it supports persistence that is possible but if we don't support persistence then basically it it has to be a uh, complete you know synchronous process it cannot be asynchronous it will not wait for a user to complete the action so that is the difference uh, the same thing i would have also uh, shown in the orchestration process so um, um, i'm sorry to cut this off but we are not doing a document understanding session it's very easy to blur the lines for me because yeah i i just keep it going into details but uh, what i really wanted to show is the you know the wait for uh, document classification action or there is also a wait, wait for validation action and then I, I would have to look for it but it's in the in this framework somewhere and what it does is it waits for the user and if it supports persistence it can do that for multiple multiple files at a time and the robot will automatically understand not robot but orchestrator which is the the system that runs all these automations it will understand which exact instance to resume based on whichever task has been completed so this task or action will go to action center where a human can um, human can action it or complete that um, this won't take long this is the other type of project which is the long running workflows um, I only created this from the framework. There is a very small framework and all the files are provided here. But if you don't, even if you don't use this framework, um, what I re one cool thing that every UiPath project comes pre-built with is this snippets tab, where if you just go into UiPath Studio and open any project, even RE framework, which is the most def like default project now, uh, you can always go to orchestration and find the create task and wait for uh, wait for tasks so there are different types of tasks that that can be created there is a form task and there is an external task so uh, i i would definitely recommend going going to uh, uipath docs and reading about it at the end of the session i have a url which will uh, which will have all these resources once the session is complete and the video is available i'll make sure all the links are also uploaded to that page it's on rpfeveryone.com and it'll be always there so you can you know even after the session one week one year from now you can go and read that so yeah it'll be available um, again uh, just to cover that this this process also supports persistence and the in this case it also starts in background which is a different feature it's it's only for background processes so if something does not require any um, surface automation at all like logging into a chrome browser or opening an application and doing a few things then you can create a background automation which can run with another background automation so you can have multiple robots multi running multiple processes on the same machine without disturbing anyone i mean each other so that that's another cool thing that's um, you know provided by uipath so those are the two types of projects that uh, you know 
primarily involve humans in the loop. Uh, and again, as I was uh, showing the, the create form tasks and create tasks, all these tasks, there is also a wait activity for these. You just simply open one of these snippets, copy the code and make a workflow out of it. And you can simply have a, a process that waits for you to complete the action and then resumes automatically. So uh, definitely go check that out. Um, I'll come come back to my presentation, which there's none left after this. Uh, that was pretty much the last part I wanted to show. Um, that's my website and that is the URL that I was talking about. rpforeveryone.com slash HITL, human in the loop, easy to remember. So if you go there after the session, um, I'll, I'll upload all the resources that I talked about and anything else that came up. And yeah, you can have access to that anytime in the future when you watch this video. So thank you from me. And if there are any questions, we can, you know, answer some now. Definitely, I think uh, our users are waiting for the questionnaires and when you take the questions, so let's just turn on to speaker mode transition. And yeah, here we are uh, with two speakers and so uh, go ahead team and uh, everyone who want to ask any question regarding human in loop or anything with respect to RPA. The session or questionnaire is open for everyone. Go ahead and ask and you have expert available for us ready to answer it for you. And uh, meanwhile, um, Astosh, what you can do is uh, you can just uh, do a screen share. Screen share is already on. Uh, just open your um, YouTube as well as Insta profiles so that we will just share it up. Yep. So if you want to follow Astosh, go ahead and follow. He will do a great um, videos on YouTube as well as with Insta. You can definitely check it out. So yeah, that's me. You can you can look me up just by my name. Uh, thankfully, this name is, I think, unique enough that it comes up uh, at least, you know, easily. So you should be able to find me uh, relatively easier. And I I am doing a, like some stuff behind the scenes. So uh, right now the videos are on pause, but yeah, uh, hopefully soon there will be a series launching soon. And yeah, you can find out from Vajran's channel or my channel. I'll I'll make sure that you know he tells you about it as well. Yes. So that that is my channel. It has a little bit of details, a uh, little bit of detail about me, uh, what I've done so far, and obviously, if you forget my website, it's also there. As if I've I haven't uh, made enough noise about RPA for everyone. But yeah, that that's me. You can um, look me up on LinkedIn as well. Excellent. So uh, let's just wait for some questions. If we don't have any questions, then we'll definitely close it uh, in a while. And here you go. To speakers transition. Okay, so if you are having any questions, go ahead and ask them members who are already on live. Let's just get it started. So I see a question from Sarita. She is asking, mm -hmm. may I know in which UI path version document mm -hmm. understanding framework is available? Yeah. So document understanding framework is available in UI path studio across any version. All you have to do is um, just go to the templates because it's not by default pinned to the uh, templates tab. You just need to go and look for it. So if I share my screen just one last time, hopefully, Yep, you are on. You can share the screen. When you go into you know the your start tab, if you don't see it here, I see it here because I've recently used it, so it's in my recent. But typically, these are the pinned ones that you will see. So document understanding is not here. You can create a robotic enterprise framework, and some default um, you know templates are available. But if you go here, now there are. Again, as I was earlier showing, if you don't see it like this, then also check include pre-release. But the good news now is document understanding process is available. 
yeah. uh, even outside the pre-release part. So there, there are two stable versions. Uh, depending on which UiPath Studio you are on, you can download one of these. So uh, I did say that it's available with any studio, but you'll probably have to just check the compatibility uh, of the, the studio. If you're really on some, some obsolete version that, you know, uh, unfortunately, because uh, the company that you are in hasn't uh, yet upgraded, which should be happening soon because the way UiPath lifecycle works is that they um, bring the older versions out of support and then automatically the existing uh, installations are updated. So you should be able to find easily the DU process. And if you don't, then obviously just, you know, you can check with Vajrang or me on LinkedIn or any other channels. We are on every uh, every social. So yeah, let us know uh, if you have any problems there. Sure. So I think we are good uh, for now. Last five minutes and I have just uh, ran quick polls and uh, the polls came out very good. Uh, like which RPA tool have you used? Like do you like the most? And UiPath is already standing at the top with 90% <laughs> and next goes with Automation Anywhere and I have added Robocorp, uh, but I think Robocorp still need to get some traction in the market. And uh, they, so what do you think, Ash? Um, which tool do you think will be the next future of uh, RPA? Uh, I do understand UiPath is already leading, um, but uh, uh, with competition with UiPath, what do you think? No, um, well, I mean, to be honest, I don't consider myself, you know, qualified enough to answer that question, mm -hmm. but mm. Uh, we we have seen quite a few different tools coming up with really cool stuff uh, yep. in the recent years. So Microsoft, for example, is doing a lot of cool stuff with uh, Power Platform, as yes. I already mentioned. So, uh, you know, why Microsoft has a little bit of, you know, foot in the door because every company is already on Office 365, which makes yeah. it really easy to integrate with Teams, integrate with uh, Microsoft Power Flow, uh, which are, you know, if you are on office 365 if actually it's a good point because uh, if if you anyone listening to this if you're already on in a company where microsoft office 365 already exists you can definitely get started on you know power automate at least the basic stuff there yeah. are quite a few things that are only available for premium which means your company would have to be paying for the yes. for the um, you know power platform but you can still do a lot of basic training on your own and the power platform is available to learn for free on um, on the visual studio website or if you just google power, microsoft power platform training you'll see a lot of training courses that are available for you to get started so uipath academy and you know uh, microsoft learning two of the like most abundant available resource for rpa if you if you are interested yeah. and uh, i already said like two three times so i sound like a broken record at this point but uh, you know if you're learning uipath go join community community.uipath.com that yes. it's a forum which if you post a question uh, that you know it, it, a good question so uh, you'll get, you'll get an answer within the next hour that that is how active the community is we are already in in company with someone who was a champion poster last week i just saw your post uh, watching so <laughs> Thank yeah. you. I, I actually don't know how did I get it. Somehow I posted some uh, well, like uh, things that are required for the community. So I mm -hmm. understood that if you post something that is required for the community and if more people see it and more people respond to it, and that's how you can see your name in the top little board. Uh, that's what mm -hmm. my assumption is. Not no. If I continuously do it for multiple times, then I will try to crack the code. Uh, but we have a message from Nitin George. The session was amazing. Thank you so much, Ash and team. Sarita Niharika. Is it Microsoft? Thanks, Nibin. Uh, Nibin, right. Uh, so uh, Sarita is saying, uh, is Microsoft tool user friendly? Uh, every tool is user friendly if you are able to learn it and if you are able to use it. So uh, just don't uh, depend on one tool. You can definitely go ahead with multiple tools. But uh, yeah. what I suggest is if you want to have more opportunities and if you want to be in the market, you cannot uh, you cannot use a tool that only your company is uh, using and you cannot go with the tool and uh, crack a job in the market. So you should always uh, follow the trend to be in the trend. There is a saying in uh, one of my uh, favorite movie star, um, Pawan Kalyan's uh, 
movie gabba singh uh, there there was a saying like if you want to be in the trend you need to follow the trend as well so just follow the trend and then you will definitely uh, go ahead and achieve uh, or get the things done for you okay so also sarita i i saw a couple of other questions as well mm-hmm. in the um, mm-hmm. you know i was scrolling up sure. so you do have questions about document understanding we mm-hmm. will definitely try and have a session probably in the future about yeah. that yeah. Uh, but since we were focusing on human in the loop there were there were other stuff to cover so sorry about that but uh, just to add to vajrang's point you know the tools are user friendly because one one thing that i didn't really get into a lot is uh, currently the way technology has uh, has been working like if you look at any other technology that was working like let's say coming up 10 years ago they were more focused on you know just keeping it to the developers make it easy for developers or make it easy for the technology to work on its own but now a major shift that we have seen recently especially with rpa is that it's not just a technical person or a non technical person that divide has kind of blurred into something that is now called citizen developer yep. so if you are a citizen developer in rpa that means you are coming from a business point of view rather than from a technical stand you know technical standpoint so to make it easy for any business user to break that barrier and build their own automation uh, ui path microsoft they've all made the citizenship develop uh, sorry citizen developer program really easy to access and that's like an entry level um, you know automation learning and then you can definitely delve more into uh, high high profile stuff like actual actual uh, development in the ui path studio platform so and the if you are i'm not sure how your current you know work profile is but if you are completely new to rpa i would suggest look into the citizen developer program for microsoft r or ui path yep. and that is a really good place to start and then you can go from there exactly so uh, citizen developer program also like uh, you can use uh, ui path citizen uh, developer um studio team, x studio x theme that's just yeah. a theme but all all the functionalities you have for a developer you will have you will still have for a citizen developer uh, all you need to use uh, you, all you need to know is you will, it will just give you a better um design view so that you will be able to understand and you will be able to work on it okay so that's it for today everyone uh, thank you so much ashutosh and uh, uh, everyone please hit a like for this video stream and as well as go ahead and check out his uh, instagram i have kept the you know, instagram handle uh, across all the uh, across my current video it's uh, un- at the rate rpa for everyone in instagram so go ahead and check out give it out a that, thumbs that- up that is my twitter facebook everything so rpa exactly. for everyone is basically you can look me up on any platform that that's right. the same handle exactly. uh, i've made sure <laughs> um and also if if you found this helpful or right. if you know someone who's you know they may be struggling to get into rpa or they may be just now getting introduced to rpa please definitely share with them because sure. like i said the question you should always be asking is what's in it for me so you know it if you if you probably don't need it right now maybe you're in a good space uh, if someone else you know that that needs it really please please make uh, make sure to share with them and yeah that is the best thing that we can ask for right now thank you okay thank you so much and parvati says good session hope we see more absolutely with Thanks, uh, with great speakers like ashosh i can bring in great information for you all to get started and to get rolling Thanks. up Thank you so much. So stopping the screen share in 3, 2, 1.